and we're going to get to that here with fielding the 68 our bracketology team they're up right now trying to figure out who is going to go in the big dance speaking of playing your way in we crowned a bunch of conference champions earlier today uab played their way in they come out of conference usa behind jelly walker vermont rolled to an america east title could they be dangerous on thursday or friday yes the catamounts could st peter's wins the mac going to this their fourth NCAA tournament in school history. The point is, this is a, a lovely couple of days, but it's also a couple of days where our feeling the 68 team is changing their projections. They had Virginia Tech in the first four heading into today. Now, there's no debate about first four. They're going. The question becomes, Notre Dame, Wake Forest in the ACC, T.O., what is going to happen with the Atlantic Coast Conference? Those two teams are on the edge of their seats. what, a quad three or quad four loss going into the tournament. I know they say that the last 10 games, like they've mattered in the past, are significant. It's not supposed to be like that. But the committee, they're human. They see how teams are playing. We, we could talk about a little bit of that with Xavier as well. The committee sees these things. Wake Forest didn't show up uh, on day two of the tournament. It's, it's going to be interesting to see because moving forward, Well, I mean, that, that's the problem with playing in the ACC this year is that you're just not going to be able to get the, the, the massive wins that you need. And look, Notre Dame has one with, by, by beating Kentucky, right? And that was a very, very big win for them. Um, but Wake Forest played the 338th non-conference schedule in the country. And, um, and, and when you don't play anyone, you don't schedule anyone, that is the biggest issue. Yeah, you've got to challenge yourself. And look, uh, I, I don't blame Steve for the way that he scheduled this year. He needed wins. He needed to develop confidence. He needed to get his program heading in the right direction. It was smart to schedule the way that he did. He never could have predicted that you would not be able to get quality wins in ACC play. Yeah, it's difficult because their best win really is LSU, or the only really non-con that is significant was LSU, and LSU beat the snot out of them. So that's kind of the big issue that we're running into right now. Wake Forest, uh, like I said, I'm not sure if it was picked up or not on the audio, but that's a tournament team from an eye test perspective. They're big. They can shoot. They can do a lot of things. The non-conference scheduling is so massively important moving forward. I think that needs to be a big time emphasis for the Atlantic coast moving forward, because this year they just did not do a very good job of scheduling. This is an abnormal year for the ACC because you could have gotten away with having a lighter non-con and saying, look, we're going to have enough tough league games. That was not the case this year. And you look at Wake Forest resume. Let's break it down for America right now. Their net is 45. They're one and four against quadrant one. You look at that. I, I don't have to look at any other quad two, three, four to know that one and four against quadrant one probably isn't good enough. It probably isn't good enough on selection Sunday. You have to have more of a body work. And if not more than one or two quad one wins, at least did you play more quad one games? They only played five quad one games. That's what some mid-majors have. You take a look deeper into their resume, four and three against quad two. Okay. But a combined 18 wins against quad three and four. We typically nick on mid-majors who have 18, 19, quad three and four wins. The fact is you wouldn't know Wake Forest resume from a team in the WCC or Mountain West this year. Well, I mean, that that's the biggest thing is that if you took that resume and gave it to like a Murray State, I don't know that they would necessarily get in because it's it's it, it's uh, the problem is the ACC conference schedule. And we've beaten this over the head. And it's something I, I'm sure ACC fans are tired. Of. Like we just had an unbelievable game here. and They don't want to selling them how much your league sucks. Right. But the league was not good enough. And it, you just you did not you weren't able to mass the quality wins that you needed. And the other problem is that if you look around the country, there are other teams that did things to play their way in like a Virginia Tech. The spot that they took might be Wake Forest spot. It might be Notre Dame spot. Texas A and M. They're in the tournament. They're dancing, guys. They're dancing. Like they're they're in. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. Texas A and M is in. So it's it's late in the season, right? You need to be able to do the things you need to do and win the games you need to win. And we see this happen every single year. But you can't if you're Notre Dame lose in the first round of the ACC tournament. You can't if you're Wake Forest do that. Like that. Those are the things that end up killing you. And just looking at Texas A&M for a moment, folks, you think about what they've done. They have three quad one wins. They have nine quadrant one losses, 
but they've played 12 quad one games. This goes back to the fact that if you've played quadrant one opponents and you've lost, you still end up doing more for your resume than if you don't play them at all. Than if you don't play them at all. If you play a bunch of quad three and quad four teams, you're not going to get, it's a, there's no reward there. There's no reward. So the, the one thing that I look at with AM is they're 5-0 and against quad two. So in the games against quality opponents, but not necessarily the highest of caliber, they've taken care of business. They don't have any too, too bad blemishes. They went on a bad winning streak. I think the point here is, look, what Rob, what you said, Steve Forbes has done one of the best jobs in college basketball this year. You can both say you understand why Wake Forest scheduled the way they did and also state that it's not that of an NCAA tournament team from a resume standpoint. Facts are facts. The Demon Deacons are going to get to the NCAA tournament soon. He's got them on the right trajectory. But we got to be fair here when we say they have one quad one win. They've only played five quad one games. And that typically is what we criticize the mid-major teams for on Selection Sunday. Well, the big thing, too, is is when you're Texas A&M, you're, playing, you're getting more of those quad one opportunities in league. So would, would you say they were three and nine in the quad one? That happens because the SEC what had five or six teams that you were able to gather those wins and those games from, right, Fanta? So it makes it really – it makes it hard, especially in the ACC where at Virginia Tech you're having a win. That's a tough place to play. And it, to kind of defend the ACC for a second, to kind of defend the ACC for a second. Go ahead. Larry Nega said it during his post, post-game press conference yesterday. It was a conference that took more transfers and young players that rely on more transfers and young players. The non-conference is when you start to figure your guys out. So that's a big portion of it, too. If you look at the Big Ten, for example, you look at the SEC, a lot of those schools are hanging on to players for two, three, four years, and then you you're able to provide some success for your guys that way. So that's one of the reasons why the ACC has struggled. This mic's good enough to pick both of you up. Okay. Notre Dame, in or out? Out. Two seed in the ACC. Yes, they're in. Is that an evaluating tool? <laughs> no. Sorry, T.O. Okay. I'm sorry, T.O. They're out. I think, I think both Notre Dame and Wake Forest are going to – have a very rough, very unfortunate selection Sunday. So you're saying you're thinking three ACC team or four ACC teams is what you're saying with Virginia Tech stealing a bit. Mm-hmm. And I think the that Texas A&M gets in. Um, I think right now here, here's the one I don't understand, and I don't like. I'm not going to sit here and call out the fielding the 68 guys because they are so much better at this stuff than I am. But I don't I don't see SMU. I don't get SMU why they're in the field. Um, and maybe they'll end up being the one that gets gets punted for uh, for Texas A&M um, now that they are in. But I, I don't I don't see it with SMU. But I mean, I just I think if you look at what Oklahoma did and the wins that they have, I honestly I would take Rutgers and what they've done uh, over over. But you can't have all of those teams when it comes down to it. Like it just someone's going to get left out that has a resume that in theory would be good enough to be on the bubble. Like I, we always talk about how weak the bubble is, T.O., I think the bubble's pretty strong this yeah. year because there's there's teams that that I I said this before on the show, if if you don't get into the NCAA tournament, you don't have any room to complain because you didn't do enough. I think this is going to be one of those years where it's like if Rutgers doesn't get in, like it sucks because you lost Lafayette, but you you did enough during league play. You probably you have the four seed in the Big Ten that might not get in, the two seed in the ACC might not get in. It's it's wild the way this worked out this year. With that being said, to our friends at Bet Rivers. Our presenting sponsor here on Field of 68 After Dark, Sirius XM Channel 84. Knowing that the bubble is strong, does that mean that we're going to see 10s and 11s? That we could see a couple of those? Maybe win a game, if not two, in the NCAA tournament? I think the NCAA tournament this year is about as wide open as it's ever been in its history. And I think it has to do with a lot of different things. One... The biggest bubble, period. Is, what's going on? Is it not working? No, 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 no. Okay, I was just making sure. I was. I looked at you for a second. Did I say something crazy? You were looking at me nuts. Uh, it makes you smile. It did. Well, it worked. Well, here, here, let me let me let me say it for you. To doesn't want to curse on the show. The NCAA tournament is going to be a shit show this year. Capital S, capital S. You notice how I didn't say that, right? <laughs> okay, so here's a big thing. I, the extra the extra year of eligibility is massive because you have the talent is so much more dispersed this season, right? I think it's going to make for – there's more talent throughout the country, whether it be mid-majors. You've had a lot of guys transfer from high to mid. 
those teams are going to win games. UTC might very well win a game. That Chattanooga team's good, and they've got a bunch of former high major guys there. This is a this is a year where we have eight teams that could win a national championship. It's significantly. It's going to be more date. I mean, really, you, you're looking at probably eight, nine, ten teams that if get hot with the right draw, seating is going to be important. Matchups are going to be even more important, and there's so many good players this year. You know what's going to determine who wins a national title this year? Who who has the upsets in their bracket? Right. What three seed doesn't have to play someone that's higher than a five seed before they get to the final four? That's I honestly think that's what's going to end up being like, how well is your draw? How well is your matchup? Who do you end up playing? OK, T.O. is right, as, as always, T.O. is right. Before we break rapid fire here on a scale of one to ten, ten being the most concerned. Where are you on the Duke meter? Eight, because really, how much have they gotten better? That's the biggest question. Uh, I am. I would say. A six point five. Uh, I am. I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think that I would have them for a while. I had them in the same conversation as Gonzaga and Arizona when it comes to being a national title contender. I think they're more kind of in that Villanova range where it's like, yeah, I could talk myself into it, but they also have some issues as well. Well, folks, we're just getting started here. Feel the sixty-eight after dark, and our feeling the sixty-eight full bracket is over on our Twitter account at the Feel the sixty-eight. Just to give you a bubble update. Their last four in seven hours ago was SMU, Virginia Tech. Throw that out. Virginia Tech's going dancing. Xavier and Oklahoma. Their first four out was Texas A&M, Notre Dame, Rutgers, and VCU. But it would appear that the Aggies are going to be going dancing. So add Texas A&M into that last four in here. Potentially, we'll get 